What's good, Internet? My name is Attack Slug, and this is my EA E3 2016 press conference reactions video. Gonna kind of go down what happened at that EA press conference in a more condensed format, give my opinions, my thoughts on what EA showed this year at E3. Now, they started off the press conference with EA wants your feedback, and I'm sure they are tired of continually being in that voting for the worst company in the world thing they have every year, so certainly they want to do better. And this year's press conference comes from two locations. They were not at E3 proper. Uh, they were in LA, I think, and they were in London. So they kind of went back and forth between uh, the guy in LA and Peter Moore in London. Obviously, Peter Moore. They kicked off their gameplay stuff with Titanfall 2, which is coming out October 28th, which is interesting, because it's a week after Battlefield 1, and a week before Call of Duty, Infinity, whatever. So you have to wonder, is that kind of overload for online multiplayer first-person shooters, like bam, 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 in three weeks? Like, who has that kind of time and that kind of money? And certainly they want to compete with Activision and Call of Duty, but Battlefield and Titanfall are both EA properties. Anyway, we got a multiplayer trailer, which looked about what you would expect from Titanfall, and then, as was leaked out earlier in the day, we got a single-player trailer. And that is what has the most interest to me as someone who mostly plays single-player games. I'm curious how they're going to handle that stuff. It looked really cool. My biggest concern is that in giving your Titan a personality in the campaign, they're just going to kill him off at the end. Anyhow, Xbox One, PS4, no longer exclusive, and obviously PC coming out October. Then the press conference moved on to Madden 2017, and if you've watched this channel, you know I really don't care about sports, so hey, it was Madden. They're having some kind of eSports initiative with all their stuff, and I really don't think of EA when I think of eSports, but hey, more power to them. Back from last year was their up next little things when a guy's talking about a thing you don't care about. It's like, hey, we're talking about Madden right now, but up next, stick around, we're gonna talk about Battlefield and Battlefront, we promise. And sure enough, up next was Mass Effect Andromeda, a game I really want to be excited about. It's taking place so far past Mass Effect 3 in that universe, meaning that hopefully people have kind of moved past the fervor and the anger of that Mass Effect 3 ending. That game's not due out until 2017. We will hear more this fall, and there was a trailer that had some stuff that looked like gameplay, but also, hey, here's us doing the little animations in our studio type stuff. Here's the artwork, and here's the mocap, and like, look, just show me a gameplay trailer. Show I don't care if it's mostly CGI, just throw in some gameplay in there. Don't show me how you're making the game. Like, two years ago, that's kind of all they had at EA, was like, hey, here's here's some wireframes of stuff. Like, I don't want to see that at an, EA, uh, at an E3 press conference. They spent a little bit of time talking about how they're constantly updating all their games, and I guess that's DLC stuff too, that's cool, I guess. They talked about Play to Give, which is some kind of charity thing where people do achievements in a select number of games that have certain achievements they're introdu introducing in updates, and there, when that happens, they'll donate a million dollars to charity, and that's, that's cool. And then we go back to sports with FIFA, which is the other football, the real football. FIFA is now running on the Frostbite engine. FIFA now has a story mode. And out comes a football man, and I don't know who this is, and they kind of did a big thing back and forth about how his kid buys a lot of uh, the Ultimate Team card things and all that other nonsense. I really don't care. He seemed like he really didn't want to be there, but they probably paid him a bunch of money to show up. Anyhow, EA has a new initiative and a new segment in the company they are calling EA Originals. Those of you with a long-term memory uh, should remember that at one point EA had a publishing program called EA Partners. This kind of seems not as large-scale as that. It seems like they looked at what Devolver Digital was doing with indie games and said, hey, we could do that. There was money there. So certainly earlier in the year we had Unravel, and then now we have a game called Fee. This game called Fee looks like a third-person platformer. There aren't enough of those around, so I'm excited about that. 
it's very purple, and it has a very distinctive uh, art style. So if EA can promote smaller indie games they're finding around the world, uh, that to me seems like a good thing, and they said they're giving all of the profits from these games go right back into the developers, so they can make more games, and that is always a good thing. Next up, it is Star Wars Talk with Jade Raymond. Hey Jade Raymond, where the hell have you been? We learned that 2017 will have a new Battlefront, obviously, with the dice at the lead, but also being helped by Motive, which is the Jade Raymond studio, and Criterion. Notable that Criterion didn't have anything else in this hour-long press deal. What the hell is Criterion doing? They showed that weird thing two years ago with a wireframe, ATVs, and power gliding, and fucking whatever. The 2018 game from Visceral. Man, 2018 is so far away. They showed a little bit of early footage from that 2018 game from Visceral. Third-person action game. That's what I want to play. And they mentioned that Respawn is working on a Star Wars game even farther out than that. So who fucking knows, 2019, 2020? Who knows when that game is coming? There was no footage from that. It was, here's some guys in mocap suits with lightsabers. Then the show moves on to Battlefield 1, which I haven't been excited about a Battlefield game since 1942 and 1943. So going back to that era for me is actually pretty exciting, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, if they can hopefully not have a crippling save bug in their single player this time. Dice, please allow me to actually finish the damn single player without constantly deleting the goddamn save file. Would be nice. So they had kind of a teaser and then some more talking, and then they kind of talked up the fact that they're doing a 64-player, one-hour live stream at some point, uh, possibly right now, as I'm t talking about this right now. With those two 32-player teams, we're going to have Jamie Foxx and Zac Efron, who were there, and they didn't look like they actually wanted to be there, much like the soccer guy. But that game is out October 21st. It will have an open beta later this summer. Looking forward to that, I guess, Battlefield Insider stuff. And that pretty much wraps up the one-hour EA press conference. Later tonight will be Bethesda, and I'm very curious to see what they show. But until then, and until next time, as always, I am your host, Tax Slug. Thanks for watching. More videos every day. If you're not subscribed, if you're finding out this channel for the first time, hit that subscribe button. That'd be cool. I put out gaming videos. It's fun. Anyway, I'll see you next time right here on this channel. And I'm out.